we have made it through the first month of the year. I would just like to give a round of applause for everybody. We did it. This year, one of my little New Year's resolutions is to be consistent in my monthly favorites because last year I did them pretty sporadically. Um, let me know in the comments if you enjoy these monthly favorites, by the way, if you wanna see me do them month to month or maybe only every couple of months. I really would like to try to do it every month. So we're starting off strong with January. I put together quite a eccentric list of favorites. We have a little bit of everything, some beauty, home, lifestyle, even some cat stuff because if you didn't know, I'm a dedicated cat mom. So I have a really good cat toy that I think anybody else who has a cat or honestly a child even would really <laughs> enjoy this toy. Stay tuned. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments on everything that I'm talking about today. And if you wanna share some of your favorites over the last month, I would love to hear them. And like the video if you enjoy monthly favorites. So let's just get right into it. We're gonna start off first with beauty products. And I have a bunch of new hair products that I've been really enjoying and incorporating to my routine over the last month. This is a brand new shampoo that I discovered very much on a whim. So I was doing some Googling and I came across this brand called Everest. So they basically created a shampoo and conditioner concentrate, meaning there is no water inside of this formula because according to them, most shampoos are more than 70% water and there's no water in here. So the formula is three times more concentrated. It's plant-based, vegan, cruelty-free, travel-friendly, free from power bins, sulfates, silicones, dyes, and synthetic fragrances. So you're essentially meant to squeeze out like a really small amount of the product in the shower, which is why it's in this like squeezy tube packaging with this little key that you have to squeeze out the product because it's very, very, very thick. And then you use the water from, of course, your shower to activate the product. I also got a lot of mixed reviews from you guys. I had shared this on my Instagram. Some of you were telling me that it's like your favorite shampoo. Some of you were telling me that you didn't get it and that it just really didn't work for you. And I kind of understand where this could go wrong for a lot of people because it's obviously not a typical shampoo. It's very, very thick in texture. So thick that if you were to squeeze it out, it would probably stand straight up. There is definitely a small learning curve. You need to understand how much product you actually have to use, how much water to use, how to really like activate it properly. It does require a little bit more effort. So because this is a concentrate, you definitely don't need as much product as you may think. After I squeeze it out, I rub it between my hands so that it's nice and even across my hand. And then I'll go in and put my hand underneath the water and start to really mix the water with the product and almost like emulsify it. And then I'll just go in and wash my hair as normal. Formula wise, this is probably one of my favorite shampoos I have ever used. And honestly, I'm shocked that I'm even saying that because I really did not have very high expectations going into trying this. This made my hair feel so clean. It also gave my hair such good shine bounce. It made my hair feel really nice and hydrated. I do have the matching conditioner, which I do also really like. I just didn't want to bring both to my office. So I just brought one because they both look the exact same, but even the conditioner I was so impressed by because typically I like to use a hair masks. and a lot of conditioners just aren't moisturizing enough for my hair. My hair right now, this is from the shampoo and conditioner and I find it just like so shiny and soft. My one con with this product is I feel like I'm running through it so quickly, but I'm already like a third through the product. And I feel like that's really not the most cost-effective thing. So I don't love that. Some other hair favorites of mine over the last month are the Sasha Wan styling products. This is the styling cream and the finish cream. It's funny because these have actually been sitting in my hair collection for months now. And I used them once or twice and I remember enjoying using them, but then I kind of forgot about them. And over the last month, I rediscovered them from my own collection and I started using them pretty much every single time I styled my hair. And they really impressed me. I really felt like they were super effective and did exactly what they were set out to do. The styling cream is my favorite. I like to put this in my hair before blow drying it. When I blow dry my hair, I will section off each section and put a nice size dollop of the stuff throughout each section so it literally coats every single strand of hair. And this helps to heat protect. It also helps to add more shine and just make my hair look nice and smooth. I styled my hair yesterday. I use this product and I mean, this is what it's looking like. And like I said, it's looking real shiny and real silky. I think it has a lot to do with this whole combination of products, really. I'm gonna dispense a little bit of this so you guys can see the texture because it's called a, a styling cream, but it literally looks like a gel. It's pretty much just like a clear 
product. And when I first started using this, I actually thought that maybe something went wrong with my product and I kept mixing it <laughs> to see if that made it creamier. And I really like this texture because it's not super creamy or heavy. It doesn't weigh my hair down. So this has been a big staple in my routine. And then I've also been using the finishing cream. And this is essentially just a cream that you apply to your hair after you're done blow drying or styling it just to add a little bit more moisture and shine and definition. And this obviously works great. Let's actually put a little bit in. And similar to the styling cream, it's also very, very lightweight. So it's gonna add that moisture Sure, add that shine, but it's not gonna make your hair feel dirty or heavy or weighed down. So these are awesome. If you love a glossy, sparkly eyelid, please let me introduce you to the Urban Decay Moon Dust Palette. I have been keeping it so simple when it comes to my eyeshadow over the last like year plus. I really don't wear full eyeshadow looks that often, but what I do like to wear is a very glossy, sparkly top coat. Daytime, nighttime, any time of day, I don't care. I will put a nice sheer sparkly shadow across my lid because it looks gorgeous. And my go-to over the last year plus has been the Rowan eyeshadow palette. And I still love that thing. It's wonderful, but it's nice to find something a little bit new. And now that I'm actually saying this out loud, I'm actually realizing that these are very similar colors compared to the Rowan eyeshadows. So I understand why <laughs> I like this so much. These compared to the Rowan eyeshadows, have way more intensity to them. They are glossier, they are sparklier, and they give way more pop to the eyelid. Let me show you. The sparkle is very, 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 very fine. So it creates the most ethereal look when applied to the eyelids. And an eyeshadow like this is really versatile because they are pigmented, like you do actually get some color behind them, but they're not so pigmented where you can't layer them on top of like an existing eyeshadow look. So my favorite way to apply these is with my finger and my favorite color in here is Space Cowboy. This has been around for a really long time, this color, but people on TikTok especially have been really enjoying it. So I feel like it's having a second life at the moment or maybe the moment has passed. I don't know, I can't really keep up. All I know is that I really, really love it because it's a bright sparkly eyeshadow, but it's not as bright as this guy. This is really beautiful to put on like the inner corner or even to put all over the lid, but I prefer a brighter eyeshadow like this almost to highlight my, my eye width, whereas Space Cowboy, I wanna put all over the lid. It's like bright without being too stark. So I'm gonna just take it on my finger, which is my favorite way to apply these. It's sometimes so hard to get these types of shadows to translate well on camera, which is so frustrating because I just want you guys to see how stunning it, it is. I'm gonna take a little bit of Star Cowgirl, which is that lighter shade, and put that in the center of the lid. And the combination of the two is wild. <laughs> it's so good. It makes it look even more glossy and wet. Just putting that little bit of highlight right in the center of the lid. It's so, 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 so pretty. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of this palette. It's so great. And I cannot stop just smearing this all over my eyelids and I will probably continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Next, I want to chat about the new Summer Fridays lip oils. These have very recently come into my life, so am I cheating a little bit by mentioning them as my monthly favorites? Maybe, maybe just a little bit, but my channel, my rules. Really wanted to mention these because even though they haven't really been in my life for very long, I've had them for maybe about a week now, I still wanted to talk about them with you guys because I know that there's a lot of curiosity around these at the moment because they're pretty new. Um, and I have a lot of thoughts about them and obviously I really like them because they're my favorites, but there are some notes that I wanted to share with you in case you are also interested in these. So these are the new dream lip oils from Summer Fridays. And I can tell you right away that this is probably my favorite lip oil formula that I've tried. Because since lip oils have been so popular lately, pretty much every brand has released their own version. And every brand kind of does their own version of what they feel is a lip oil. And I gotta say, a lot of them kind of miss the mark because most of them are just lip glosses. For me, a lip oil should have like a slick serum-like texture to it. It shouldn't be sticky, it shouldn't be too thick, and it should just be really nice and lightweight and plush on the lips. And a lot of brands I find go too thick and sticky. And in my personal definition of what a lip oil is, I just believe that that is more of a gloss and less of an actual lip oil. So I actually feel that there are not that many true lip oils actually on the market. And this is definitely to me a true lip oil and it is my favorite lip oil texture that I've tried. This is Rosewood Nights, which is my personal favorite. It looks super dark in the tube, but it's not. It really translates as like a light mid-tone, brownie nude. It has such a nice, almost like buttery, smooth lip oil texture. So when you rub your lips together, it just feels really 
plush and beautiful. It gives the perfect wash of pigment on the lips where it gives just enough color just to give a little something, but it's definitely not too intense. It feels really nice and hydrating. And of course the sheen is beautiful. Um, some lip oils actually don't give that much shine depending on the type of formula. This one definitely gives a really, really nice amount of shine. It's thick enough where it kind of sits above the lips, which is my preferred type of gloss because then it just makes your lips look really plush, kind of gives them a bit of like a uh, like a plumper look. A lip oil that I find doesn't necessarily like sit on top of the lines is something like the Merit lip oil. That is still like a very true lip oil formula, but it's not as plush as something like this. Now, the thing that I wanted to mention is that if you are interested in these lip oils, don't buy all four shades. I really only bought these four shades because I wanted to swatch them all for you guys, for my job, but I would really only recommend getting one, maybe two of these not for really any big reason other than just the fact that they're quite sheer and there's really not a huge color difference between all of them. And I'll show you what I mean by swatching them right now. Next we have Soft Mauve. This has like the slightest purpley cool toned hint to it, but this one is very, very, very similar I find to this next one that I'm about to show you. This is Blush Dreams, which is a medium pink. And this color is really pretty, but it doesn't add much to like my natural lip color again, which is kind of why I prefer Rosewood Nights. This one is probably my second favorite and it's called Pink Cloud. It looks very, very intensely bright in the tube, but on the lips, it definitely doesn't translate to be that. It kind of just adds like a hint of brightness. It's a very fresh color. I really like it. If I were to recommend two colors, it would be these two, Rosewood Nights and Pink Cloud, because they're so different from each other. They're different enough where I feel like if you were to get both of these, they're not that redundant. Whereas these guys, definitely are. So that's my little disclaimer for the dream lip oils. Um, but I've been loving them. I've been wearing them every single day since I got them in my life. So, and I have a feeling these are just going to be staples of mine moving forward. Next up, I've got a very creepy looking beauty tool. So as some of you probably know, because I've been talking about it quite a lot recently, I have been having some issues with my skin. I discovered that I have perioral dermatitis, which is essentially a lot of like inflammation, redness, texture all around this area of the, the face, like all around the mouth. So I've been exploring many different things in the hopes that it helps my skin. I've been trying different types of products and I've also been exploring beauty tools. One day I was scrolling through TikTok and I came across a video of somebody talking about red light therapy and how great it is for your skin, especially when it comes to inflammation and redness. After watching that video, it completely jogged my memory that I literally have a red light therapy mask sitting in my vanity that I used maybe just a handful of times the year prior. This month was really all about shopping my own collection of products that I forgot about. <laughs> so this is a red light mask from Current Body. So it's pretty straightforward. You just put this mask on your face, you wrap it around your head. I'm not gonna let it touch my face because I am wearing makeup, but that's basically what it looks like. The mask is connected to a power source that you turn on. And then you have the red light and then it automatically shuts off. I think it's about 10 minutes later. So it, you do this in like 10 minute sessions. So it's very quick. Red light therapy is great, but it's not gonna do anything in one session. It's something that you really need to upkeep and use every single day. Consistency is always key when it comes to really any type of treatment. And so I decided to really commit myself to the red light therapy. And I've been doing it every morning and every night, 10 minutes each session and Wow. When I started using this, my perioral dermatitis was very inflamed, very red, very irritated. I have found that there's been a significant reduction in my redness and in my irritation. Like my skin looks significantly less inflamed. I do like to share very scary photos of myself wearing this mask on Instagram. And I get a lot of questions from you guys asking me if I think it's worth it. I can't really give you like my final stamp of approval. Like, yes, this mask literally changed my skin, but I can definitely see that there is a significant difference by using this every single day, twice a day, like something is happening and it's definitely going in a very positive direction. I would love to hear from you guys if you've tried any type of red light therapy. If you feel like it worked for you, didn't work for you, let me know in the comments. I'd be really curious to find out. And I've done a lot of red light therapy and like facial sessions and I've even done like red light therapy saunas. It's really nice that I actually have this tool at home that I can use myself whenever I want. Very excited about this and I will continue to keep you guys updated. This is very fancy soap and hand cream from Used to the People. These guys sit in my kitchen and every single time I go to wash and then moisturize my hands, with these bad boys. I just have this like moment of pure bliss. And really it's because of the scent. The scent smells delicious. I'm really terrible at describing scents, but it says here that, that it has notes of cedarwood, 
black pepper and fresh green. So it has this like woodsy but fresh scent to it. And it smells just very luxe and spa-like in the best way possible. I actually love gifting fancy hand soaps because it's not really a product that a lot of people buy for themselves. And it feels just so nice to be gifted something that is so basic that feels elevated and beautiful and smells really, really good. So I wanted to mention these because truly every single day that I use these, it just brings me so much joy and I can't get over the fragrance. Even just having them next to my face right now decreased my stress levels by like 10%. So big fan. I wanna talk about some clothing items. So a couple weeks ago, I filmed a video where I spoke about some products and some things that I wanna bring into 2024. And I mentioned that I really wanted to elevate my loungewear for the year. And I'm, I'm taking that very seriously. I got a couple more pieces and I really wanted to talk to you guys about them because they are so cute and so cozy. And they're from a brand called Lily Silk. And the first piece is this very cute hoodie. I would call this an elevated zip up hoodie moment because this isn't your typical zip up hoodie. It's actually a wool and cashmere blend. So it is soft. The sleeve detail, super cute. And just overall the quality just feels really, really good. And it's a zip up hoodie, but it's a fancy zip up hoodie. Okay, then I also have this other set. This is 100% cashmere, okay? So again, so soft. It's a wide leg, I guess I would call this lounge pant because I don't feel like this is considered a sweat pant. And then you have a matching hoodie, but this is like a little bit unique and a little bit special. I'm actually gonna put it on because I wanna show you guys. Again, I just feel like it's an elevated version of a pullover hoodie and it has a hood, but the hood is actually detachable. There are buttons over here where you can take the hood off and then it could just be a crew neck, which is so nice. So I've been wearing the set literally every single day, just lounging around my house. It is so comfy and I thought it was definitely worth mentioning as one of my favorites over the last month. We've made it to my cat toy recommendation. I know this is what you guys really have been waiting for. So here it is. I cannot take credit for this because Carissa Pukas actually messaged me on Instagram and she said, Jamie, I just bought this toy for my daughter and all I could think of was how amazing this would be for a cat. So they're called hex bugs. They're these little bug-like toys that you turn on and off and when you turn it on, it starts to vibrate. And the vibration essentially like makes them move. And when they bump into things, they'll turn around and it's just like this really erratic bug robotic toy. So you can obviously use this with children, but apparently, it's also great for cats. And I can see why Carissa thought that this would be a great recommendation because they look like little bugs and what cat doesn't like to chase after little robotic bugs, you know? The thing is, is my cat Gus is very picky. I mean, like most cats, I think every cat owner knows that cats are incredibly picky and they like what they like. For example, I have purchased Gus really extravagant, fun toys. Like if I was a cat, I would probably really enjoy playing with these toys, but Gus says, no, no, I'm not interested. Just give me an ice cube and I could be busy for hours. But I was pretty confident that he would enjoy these and I was right. And it's wonderful because Gus is incredibly lazy. He can sleep just all day long. He does get playful once you kind of rile him up. <laughs> it takes a while, but he does have that playful side to him. And these little robotic bugs really get him into that play mode so quickly and it's so nice First of all, that he's actually like staying focused and playing with these little bugs for like more than five minutes. And second of all, I don't have to necessarily be involved in the playtime. I also like to have the option of him being able to play when I'm when I'm busy and I can't necessarily sit there with like a wand toy. And these bugs are great because you just turn them on, you throw them and they just do their thing. They like crawl, not crawl, but they vibrate essentially all over the house and Gus is just like pouncing on them, running after them, hunting them. And it's just a fun time for all. So I would definitely, definitely, definitely highly recommend it if you have a cat. Thank you, Carissa. And that is it for all of my favorites of the month. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Again, don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.